Well, this may come as a surprise to many kids and their parents. The state collects a DNA sample from every baby born in California. Those samples are kept in a building right here in the Bay Area. So what does the state do with them? Julie Watts went to find out. A baby's heel. Every year, about 4 million newborns in the U.S. get pricked on it at birth to screen for congenital disorders that, if found early enough, can save their life. And she said, oh, it's very simple. We Danielle Gatto right. barely remembers a nurse even mentioning the test performed on her two daughters. I don't think that any woman is really in this state of mind to sit down and start studying up on the literature that they send you home with. But later, she was shocked to find her daughter's leftover blood was not thrown away. The state collects the cards and then um, uses them in a database. They store them in a warehouse. That's right. This nondescript office building in Richmond contains the DNA of every person born in California since 1983. A treasure trove of information about you, from the color of your eyes and hair to your predisposition to diseases like Alzheimer's and cancer. Using these newborn blood spots for research, the state's now able to screen babies for 80 hereditary diseases, but they're not the only ones using them. Law enforcement can request them, and private companies can buy them to do other research without your consent. That's not for the state to decide. Like Danielle, I had no idea my daughter's DNA was being stored until sifting through my hospital documents for this story. The only reference, this newborn screening form filled out in a stranger's handwriting without even a spot for my signature. The Department of Public Health declined our request for an interview, but does point out parents can ask to have the blood spots destroyed. They also say the DNA is de-identified, so it can't be tracked back to the child. But Yaniv Ehrlich with Columbia University and the New York Genome Center says there's no way to guarantee that. His research demonstrated how easy it is to take anonymized DNA, cross-reference it with online data, and connect it to a name. You need to have some training in genetics, but uh, once you have this sort of training, the attack is not very complicated to conduct. But he doesn't see the privacy risk as a drawback. I want to stress that sharing genomic information is highly important to advance biomedical research. This is the only way that we can help families with kids that are affected by these devastating genetic disorders. That one's even bigger. Kids like Luke Jaleen diagnosed at birth with a rare metabolic disease thanks to a heel prick. Had he not been tested, he would have been severely brain damaged, possibly would have heart and kidney problems. She's thankful the state stored DNA of millions of babies born before hers. If blood spots hadn't been saved, they wouldn't have been able to make the test that saved my child's life. Uh, he -he. But Danielle thinks the state should at least have to ask her consent before storing and selling her daughter's DNA. We're at the beginning of a frontier of so much genetic research. There's no knowing at this point in time uh, what that information could be utilized for in the future. Danielle requested her children's blood spots be destroyed. Meanwhile, her husband, Assemblymember Mike Gatto, introduced a bill this year that would have required informed consent from parents. It was killed by opposition from both the state and the industry. Julie Watts, KPIX 5.